The Gallagher Shots podcast is sponsored by Tire Spot, the North East's leading tire supplier with branches across the region. Tire Spot don't just do tires, they cover everything from servicing to wheel alignment. They can handle every aspect of your car's maintenance. For more information, visit tirespot.co.uk. Enjoy the episode. Hi everybody, welcome back to the Gallagher Shots YouTube and podcast channel and welcome back to another match preview. Yeah, we skipped the Wimbledon second one, but we did one two weeks ago, so you just you should have watched that one anyway. Um, but we are back with a new, another match preview. We turn our attentions back to the Premier League and it is for, oh, I don't like these lot, Everton. Everton mm-hmm. away. Uh, it's on Saturday, 5th of October, 5.30 kickoff under the lights at Goodison Park. And it's live on Sky. I'm Scott. I'm your host for this one. And this week, I am joined by Daryl and Nickel. Nickel in his lovely new Adidas Originals T-shirt. <laughs> Boys, let's just jump right into this one. Um, Everton aren't doing the best this season, but let's be honest, no one really expected them to after what they did last season and probably the season before. And that's no disrespect to Everton, but you just haven't really built on much. To be fair, 16th in the league on four points, one win, one draw, four defeats, seven goals scored, 15 goals conceded, giving them a minus eight goal difference. Um, Although, to be fair to them, they have gotten a result in the last two games, one draw, one win. Um, on That was on the back of, was it four defeats? So that's six games. Yeah, we're in six games played now. Um, got a few commentator stats for you before we jump into the good stuff. Um, Everton have lost just three of the last 20 Premier League home games against Newcastle. That's 1-12 and drew five. Uh, though two of these defeats have come across the last four such meetings with two wins. Uh, Newcastle have won just five of the last eight Premier League meetings with Everton uh, in total. Drew one, lost two. Uh, as many as their previous 24 against them. Drew 16, lost 13. Uh, however, they did feel to win either of the games last season. Uh, drew one, lost one. Uh, we all know what happened in the last game against them. Uh, we'll not talk about Paul Dummett mm. uh, anymore uh, and his uh, DDTs on uh, Ashley Young. Um, after losing their first four Premier League matches this season, Everton have picked up four points in their last two games. I've just mentioned that. Uh, one, one, drew one. Uh, the Toffees are looking for consecutive wins in the first time since April, um, which I think goes to show Head backs up what I said at the start of this. They just haven't been doing well for quite a while now. Um, Newcastle have won 11 points in their six Premier League games this season. That's three wins, two draws, one defeat. It's their most at this stage of a top flight season since the 2011 to 2012, where we got 12 points. Um, and Eddie Howe's best start to a league since the 2010 to 2011. That's back when he was managing Bournemouth in League One, when he also got 11 points at this stage. Um, so good on Eddie Howe for getting this far or getting this many points so far, shall I say. Uh, he's obviously, he always gets this far because everyone gets six <laughs> games in. Um, well, some managers don't, uh, but there we go. Uh, Everton have won six of the last eight Premier League matches at Goodison Park, uh, losing two since the first game in this run on April 6th. The Toffees have won more home points than any other Premier League side. And that's winning 18 points. So a bit of a fortress as Goodison Park. Um I don't like the stadium myself. It's quite very close. The fans seem very, very close to the pitch, which works in their favour. I think it's 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 always a bit of a bogey stadium for us. Um, Daryl, mate, what's your expectations going into this one? Is this a build on the performance at the weekend and try and ignore what happened midweek? I mean, I say ignore what happened midweek. There was a lot of rust on some of the players who hadn't played. It wasn't a bad performance, shall we say. It was more just a I think the commentator has put it a professional performance mm-hmm. uh, from Newcastle United midweek against Wimbledon. Yeah, absolutely. I think, you know, as you've said there, it's we really need to be building on the performance that we put in against Man City last weekend. It was much more like the Newcastle United that we know and already how the press was back. You know, they really did put a lot of effort into to hold Man City at bay. And you know what it is? This is the kind of game where we really need to see that as well because if we can match 
those levels or even exceed them against Everton, then realistically on paper, we should blow them away because of the form that they're in. You mentioned how poor their form is. Um, like you say, I think if it hadn't have been the situation it was, like other managers in this situation would have gone, but because it's Sean Dyche, he seems just, you know, he has a reputation where he'll probably dig them out of it eventually. But, you know, it's... It, when you when you look back at their start to the season when they didn't win until like three weeks ago, and the amount of goals they were shipping, the fact that they were two 0 up in a couple of games and then threw two, threw those leads away. You know, you look at there was the, there was a home game where they did it, and then they, they did it in the game against Aston Villa as well the next week. They're going two 0 up in those games and then throwing two 0 leads away is just absolutely ridiculous. Um, so there is a weakness in that team. Um, and it's up to us to exploit it. And like I say, we've got to match those levels that we showed against Man City just to to really stamp our authority on the game because, you know, Goodison, as you said, and as I've experienced myself, is a horrible place. It's not a very nice ground. And that's part in credit to the fans who can make it a hostile atmosphere, but it's also part in fact that the place is it's falling to bits and it's no wonder that they're going to move to a new stadium if they can afford to. Who knows? Um, is it? And plugged the leaks and all. It was I, I, the other day, what I saw. Yeah, they've got to take sandbags when they go and move in. Um, but, you know, I, I've borne witness to some terrible games at Goodison, and I've also, I was also there when we beat them 4 1 with Alexander Isaac's wonder assist. Um, so, you know, it's, it's, it's a mixed hunting ground for us. And I think. There's a lot of similarity. You can draw similarities between our fan base and the Everton fan base in that when the world's against them, we gel. We, we sort of like come together and we create mm. this force that's ready to repel anything that comes against it. And I think, you know, it, the atmosphere will be hostile. And my biggest worry going into this is just because because what we've seen the last two times we've been it's just how it might affect Anthony Gordon. There was a lot of expectation in the game last season when we went, and you know it was Anthony's first real return, and, and a lot was expected of him going into that game, and it didn't really work out. And he's going to be playing. Looks like he'll probably be playing as well as forward on Saturday. And again, the pressure is going to be on him, and there is going to be a lot of expectation on his shoulders to deliver on Saturday. And it's really important that we get, you know, we turn up with that ethos and that that style and, and you know using the momentum of the game against Man City and really putting a performance Yeah it's an interesting one Nickel with Anthony Gordon it's almost the opposite to what happens to Jordan Pickford at St James's not in recent times but in the past where you know the fans get on his back and he'll either lose his head or he'll make a little mistake which can end up costing Everton in the game you could argue last season it didn't necessarily cost us the game, but it cost him the performance that we were expecting because he was on such a roll and on such a run last season um, and we didn't get to see Anthony Gordon. I think Gordon's turned a bit of a corner this season in terms of his performances and he's getting up to that fitness. So if you can put that behind him, we may see a good performance from him. Yeah, and he might be able to use it <clears throat> use it to his... Uh... To his benefit, really, just to spur him yeah. on a bit. I'm sure he'll be highly motivated for the game anyway. Um, he just had a good game last week at Ma- against Man City. Um, came on last night, and although it wasn't the greatest game in the world last night, he did bring something a little bit different to the game last night uh, against Wimbledon. Um, so yeah, I'm sure he'll be going into this with 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 highly motivated. And he's obviously signed his new contract as well, which which might come out this week or, or the week after. We're not sure. Uh, he's already yeah. said it. Us, which I'm sure that pretty much means it's it's done behind the scenes. So we may just be waiting for the, the confirmation of that. So yeah, I'm, I think it should be highly motivated, and obviously he's he's playing in a slightly different role to what he's used to. Um, but I think he can cause their their centre half problems with his pace in behind. Yeah, I mean obviously we're, we're assuming Isak is still going to be injured, Daryl. We don't know yet. Um, but a broken toe doesn't heal overnight. Um, there's not a lot you can do with a broken toe other than strap it up and. Cross your fingers that it, it it heals the way it heals. Um, but I don't think he's going to be kicking a ball anytime soon, uh, depending on how bad it is. But we are, as always, recording this before the house press conference. Um, but we are expecting probably Gordon to start, and it won't be Osula, who unfortunately didn't get the service he maybe deserved 
midweek. Um, saying that, with Gordon playing up front, is it a completely different game plan in terms of how we deliver and how we attack to what you maybe saw at the, at, in the midweek? Um, I think it's certainly in terms of midweek, it'll be slightly different because I think with Gordon, you can almost play the same way you would with Isaac in the team. And if we can get it along the floor into his feet to allow him to turn and run at the defence or even putting a ball over the top that he can latch on to. I think attacking that back line of Everton is going to be a, a massive part of the game plan on, on Saturday because it's not the most mobile back line. And, mm. you know, look at the players in it. They can be got at with pace. So it is going to be on the front line, whether that, you know, whatever front three it is, it's really going to be on them to be able to break the lines, to push forward, to really run with the ball at those, at that defence and, and, and make them panic and get on the back foot and get them running back towards their own goal because that's probably the best way we're going to find success. Yeah. Um, Nicol, just to turn it back to Everton for a little bit, are there any players that you see you know, causing us a threat? Obviously, they do have some good players still, and although they're not maybe gelling at the moment, um, you know, they do have... I can, remember, I can never remember his name, but the young lad in defence... Um, who have Braithwaite. Is it Branthwaite? Braithwaite, yeah. Branthwaite. Um, I always thought he'd be a good good sign for us in the summer, but I, I think prime away at the minute is is probably something that most teams would like to do, and I don't think he's he's one of those players that maybe wouldn't do that just yet. Um, but are there any other players on that pitch that, you know, you see Everton, you go, I wouldn't wouldn't mind taking a punt on him, or, you know, you've got to watch out for him, he's going to be a bit dangerous. Yeah, well, you mentioned Branthwaite there. He just came back in the team last week, I think he's been but uh, uh, I know Man United were, were trying to sign him in the in the mm. summer just gone, um, and he's highly thought of. He's been in the England squad and stuff, so he is a good player. So it's a boost for them to have him back. Um, McNeil sc- scored two good goals last week. Um, Danger cutting, man, him. cutting it to the right. I think yeah, he plays on the right, so yeah. on his left foot, a bit like Harvey Barnes, but on the other side. Um, they've got Calvert Lewin up front, who I know is not. The, as prolific as we maybe thought he was going to be when he was younger and coming up a bit, but he can still, he's still a bit of a threat aerially. But I do think Dan Burke can, can handle him. He's just handled Harlan last week, so I think he can handle uh, <laughs> Um And yeah, they've got legs in the middle with Decore, but uh, I think to be honest, it's it's McNeil that you, you're worried about the most going forward, and then defensively, Brantwaite um, is probably their best defender. Um, and yeah, and they've got a they've got an okay goalkeeper as well. Yeah, so that's less said about the goalkeeper the better. No, it's fine. No, you know, he is he is thoroughly he is a good goalkeeper, to, you know, to to give him his dues, you know, you yeah. you don't you don't become England's number one goalkeeper just by chance, you know. It, it is it is then and it is gonna be a battle of the England goalkeepers really at the, the the weekend because you've got Nick Pope and Arsenal. Well, you're expecting to see Nick Pope. Um, you know, I, I don't think there was anything wrong with Nick Pope from a missed the game midweek. It was just simply it's a cup game, we're resting him. Um, you know, there's no no injury there from what we understand. Um, although I think anyhow did mention there was a knock or something like that, but it, mm-hmm. it's nothing serious um, in the pre-match build-up for Wimbledon. But, uh, you know, obviously Dubravka did take a knock. That could be serious. It did look pretty bad, but you've got Vlakadimis, um, who, to be fair, looked pretty solid. And, you know, he was, he was good at... I mean, not that he was tested, but <laughs> he was catching... The ball, which is nice to see, and he looked pretty <laughs> decent with his feet. Yes, um, yes, confident with his feet, and his delivery wasn't too bad. Um, so you know, it, it, it I'm not saying I'll, I'll, I'll be happy for him to take Pope's place, but it filled me with confidence that even if Dubravka is out for a little bit and we do have to rely on him, if Pope does have to take a knock, we might actually have a bit of a keeper who maybe can step in and put in a shift if needed. Yeah, I was next to Mark last night from, obviously, people will know from all the spent cases and whatnot, but um, yeah, I was with Mark yesterday and I said to him when we saw the Dubravka like, collision and then injury, I thought it might have aggravated the stomach injury that he had a couple of years ago. Mm. That kept him out for a little while when, when that happened. Um, so I, I was a little bit concerned about that, but I don't know if it was more of his knee rather than his abdomen that took the brunt of the collision. Um, but like you know, we we said we this we're doing this before Eddie's presser, so I'm sure Eddie will update us all in the, in the presser on Friday morning. Um, and you know, we'll forgive Jordan Pickford for being a T-Rex armed Mackham 
whatever. Um, but yeah, right. He is, you know, he is England's number one for a reason. He is, he is liked and favoured by the England hierarchy for, for what he brings to the pitch. Yes, he's a bit eccentric, and he, his mannerisms and his behaviour on the pitch can be quite erratic, especially when he plays against us. There's something yeah. about it, you know, he gets in his head when he's playing us. Um, like to be see a bit of a return to that old favour on, on Saturday tea time, um, and you know it. All I would say to, to anybody in our attack is if you're going to take a shot on goal, put it as far into the side of the goal as possible so you can't reach. <laughs> yeah. It's easy. Low, low and fast or high and fast and you'll be good. Mm-hmm. Um, Top corner. Obviously, we, we did see um, Fabian Cher go off with a bit of a knock. Um, there was questions about other defenders, Nickel, before the game and also during the game. Uh, I can't remember, was it... There was another defender went off injured. I can't remember who it was now. Um, but there's there's worries that we've got a couple of defenders out now. And is it a case of a patch a, a further patched up defense back line for this? Or, or do you expect the taking off of Share was more just precautionary than anything else? Uh, yeah. in midweek. I think it was more precautionary, I think. Um it, it was only with about five minutes to go, I think, if I remember rightly. So it wasn't too it wasn't too long. Um, he got a bit of a stand ovation as well because he was probably the best player against Wimbledon um, and scored a very cool penalty um, but I, I actually think the, the defence obviously last last week against Man City did really well um, so I think we'll probably see a return back. Um, so Trippier and Hall as the full backs and then Byrne and Shaw centre-halves um, providing everyone's fit so yeah I think so um, I think it will be the same as last week yeah more than likely um, we'll see but, 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 but we will see what happened I thought um, I thought Kelly did okay I, I thought he was he had a he wasn't it wasn't the best but I think he was just a bit you know rusty he hasn't played much mm. um, but he showed the qualities he's got yes again it was against the League 2 opposition so you can't really take much from it but you know again similar with Lacadimos he's a good option to have coming off the bench if we need him Um Daryl, are you worried about any fatigue after the Wimbledon game? Obviously, we've got a midweek game just come off there where other, well, where Everton haven't. Um, but any worries there about any fatigue happening? We did make a few um, changes. Yeah, no, not really about fatigue. I thought the, the players were managed actually really well by Eddie Howe in, in the game. That you know those that started who who played at the we weekend. We had a lot of the ball. That we we did have a lot of the ball, and <laughs> um, so it was quite comfortable for them as well in in that respect. But also mm. that you know those who started who had featured on the weekend were then taken off at particular times in the game as well. You know, Bruno got a half, Joe Linton lasted a bit longer, got a half pretty much as well, got an hour. Um, Cher, we know, went off with a knock, but I think it was more just the case of play him until he starts to feel a bit crampy and then get him off. Yeah. Um, you know, a lot of the lads were given, you know, Harvey Barnes lasted about an hour or so and then Gordon came off him. So a lot of players were just kept topped up with their fitness and, yeah. you know, like I say, the player management and that was really was done really well by by Eddie Howe last night. So I don't think there'll be any problems with the fatigue at all. Awesome. Well, we'll come to everyone's favourite feature of the match preview, and that is ref watch. Um, Daryl, take it away. Well, it's the first time I've done one in person for a while, um, and it is. I'm not. I'm, I'm not going to try. I'm not going to try and, and repeat the one for the first take of the Wimbledon game because it is actually Craig Pawson this time uh, from South Yorkshire. And it, yes, this because that Wimbledon game was postponed, this is actually still his second Newcastle game of the season, following on from the 1-0 win against Southampton on opening weekend. Um, like I say, he was due to referee the original game with Wimbledon down at Plough Lane, um, but he wasn't retained for the rearranged fixture. And as we saw, we got Darren Bond last night at the time of recording. Um, we have won the last three games that Mr. Pawson has taken charge of. That's the 1-0 win at the start of this season, 3-0 win over at the Stadium of Light back in January, and then also earlier of last season, the 1-0 home win against Brentford. Um, so we're looking for our fourth consecutive win with a game uh, in a game where Pawson takes charge. Now, I always see his name and I always... Feel, feel, uh, my, sort of, my sort of head fills with a bit of dread when I say his name because I always have bad memories of Pawson but obviously that little run of fixtures that I've just read out seems to put that to bed a little bit um, so we'll see what happens down at Everton on, on Saturday um, his record for this season's 
still stands at three games refereed, one red card, and we all know who that was for, Mr. Shea, and 15 yellow cards in those three games. VAR on Saturday night will be Chris Kavanagh. I think he's made the headlines in the last couple of weeks with a couple of his own decisions as well. So we'll see what he's doing when he's watching the screen from Stotty Park. There you have it. Should be well rested if he's had a, if he's had a week off as well. Um, so he should be getting be able to get down the pitch. Right then, let's turn our attentions to our predictions. Uh, Daryl, you've been away for three weeks, or three match previews. So I'm coming to you first, mate. Right. What's your prediction? Um, I do worry about the atmosphere that we'll face down at Goodison Park on Saturday. Um, on paper, I do believe we are better and we should really be winning the game, but it's something about that ground in the last couple of trips we've had there. It's been a little bit hit and miss. We had that outstanding 4 1 win, but I just don't, without, without us having a recognised striker, you know, no Callum Wilson, no Isaac, and as you know, as promising as Osula was against Wimbledon, I don't think he'll start. I don't even think he'll feature in the game, to be fair. So I'm going to actually go and with a bit of a pessimistic one here, and I'm going to go with a 1 1 draw. He's come back, he's, he's, he's come back and he's come back. He's and like draws, man. What's going on? <laughs> oh, I have to say, I agree with him. Oh, I mean, I, Jesus. Uh, I, I, this is probably the first time I'm not going to predict a win on here. Um, yeah, I think it's going to be a draw. I think, but I, I think it's going to be 2 2. I think it'll be a good game. Um, but again, like Daryl said, I think we might, you know, with that the atmosphere that they can create, um, I do think it, we might. A bit, obviously, we haven't been. We were a bit better last week against Man City, but I don't think we've been, you know, up to our levels yet this season. Um, and yeah, something tells me that they they'll get a point. And if I'm honest, I'll probably take that right now before pre match. Mm-hmm. Um, you can never come away with a point away from home. Uh, so, so do Everton go two 0 up? And then we bring it back to they throw another two in a lead. No, just to, just to, just to, just to make it. A hat it wouldn't be the them. first. It wouldn't be the first time they did it against us either. Oh, God, it's disappeared. Oh, where's Daryl gone? Back. I'm back. What 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 doing, say, sorry, what I was going to say was it wouldn't be the first time they've thrown away a two goal lead against us either. By the way, Florian That's, That's all I'm going to say. Yeah. No, I think. Uh, I think. I think they'll score first. We'll equalise. We'll go up, and then they'll get oh, a late goal. Back. Yeah. Great, right, McNeil will probably score. Okay. Can I be taking fit. late goals at Goodison Park? Like I don't just don't like it. I don't, uh, <laughs> just don't like it. Um, I suppose about to get oh, yeah. my prediction. I'm sure we'll just so end it eat. now because the two draws. Right. No, I'm not going to go for a draw because it, it kind of we can't have three draws. The comment sections are going <laughs> mental, man. Um, I'm going to go for a two-one win. <laughs> I, th- oh, I do think they'll take the lead. I think they'll they'll probably. I think they'll score early. I think they'll come out the come out the blocks. You know. All guns blazing, um, but I don't know. It's just, just something about Everton this season where they just seem to tail off at the end of games. They just—I mm. don't know if it's a concentration thing or if it's a, a fitness thing. I don't know what seems to happen, but they just don't. They don't seem to kill. Te- uh, very similar to us, actually. They just don't have that killer instinct to kill teams off when they've got the the bit between the teeth. And I, I see the same thing happening. And I think we, like you said, Daryl on paper have. The players who, you know, we again we can't kill teams off, but we've got the players on on that pitch to pose more of a threat. So I think yeah. we can come from behind and, and actually, you know, see that game out ourselves. So I think yeah, two two one to us. Um, I'm going to go for a Gordon and a, let's go Harvey Barnes to finish it off with a nice little cut inside and a top corner belter like he always does. Um, why not? Out of reach again, Pickford. Of course, yeah. And we'll get another <laughs> meme of Pickford and like in ballerine ballerina outfits and that ah, sort of stuff because when he's reaching for a reaching for a, a shot that's out of his out of out of grasp. Um but we'll see what happens. Um let us know in the comments below what you think the score's gonna be. If you're an Everton fan watching this, you've probably turned off by now after the comments were made earlier on because you'll be seeing you probably already left your comment but let us let us know um obviously it's all in jest we're not you know we don't really hate you that's where we do um do it yeah we do do we hate them yeah yeah we do um <laughs> yeah we do um but let me know in the comments below what your prediction is going to be let me know what how you think the game is going to go and let me know how your season's going are you happy with sean dyche do you think he should be 
Sack, do you think you should stay? Um, do you like the Burnley way or whatever it is that he's, it is now, the Everton way? Um, let's see. Um, but yeah, let us know how, how are things under Daesh and, and how are you enjoying your season being 16th with four points, or it might be six, seven, eight points. Uh, by the time well, it won't be eight points, but seven points. Uh, I'll do quick maths. Uh, by the time you finish the game against us, we'll see. Um, if you want to go one step further, just hit the subscribe button while you're leaving your comment. That'll put more of our videos in your feed. And if you want to know when those videos go live, hit the notification bell and that'll give you a notification. Uh, if you've liked this video, hit the thumbs up. If you haven't liked it, hit the thumbs down. If you're an Everton fan, you'll probably hit the thumbs down. But any engagement is good for us. Uh, and if you want to go one step further, we do have a membership program. It is $2.99 a month. That gets you early access to videos like this one, as well as exclusive access to certain videos and podcasts. Um, and it also gets you access to the Telegram group. Boys, I'm not out of breath. I'm going to faint. No. Um, <laughs> does anybody want to add anything before we end? I'm good this time. Wow. I was waiting for Daryl to go, yeah, just, just one more thing. <laughs> <laughs> like Steve Jobs in an Apple announcement. But yeah. um, okay, then. Well, we'll end it there. Thanks, everybody, for watching. Boys, thanks for joining us on your Wednesday evening. Pleasure. Uh, we will see you in the next one. Was it, is it Brighton next? It is Brighton next, right, after this? After the international break. Is that right? After the international break, it's Brighton. Yeah, so we'll see you after the international break for the Brighton preview. Uh, I'm not looking forward to that one. Hello. No. Uh, we'll see what happens. Um, I wasn't looking forward to the city one either, but we'll see what happens there. So we'll see what happens. And we'll see you in the next one. Thanks very much for watching. Ta-da. Cheers, guys.